After being grounded in March 2019, the Boeing 737 MAX is expected to get its certification back very soon. However, before the MAX takes off again with passengers on board, it will need to undergo some system design changes. On 6 of August 2020, the Federal Aviation Administration published a notice of proposed rulemaking listing all the suggested design changes for the 737 MAX recertification. Until the end of September 2020, all the stakeholders had an opportunity to comment on the proposed rulemaking. On top of the design changes, the FAA is also expected to publish minimum flight crew training requirements for the 737 MAX pilots. While we are awaiting the final version of the Airworthiness Directive, which will unground the MAX, we can have a look at some of the changes in the MAX systems. In summary, the FAA proposes changes in four areas. The first area is the redesigned flight control computer software, which prevents erroneous MCAS activation. MCAS, or Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, was designed and certified for the 737 MAX to enhance the pitch stability of the airplane so that it feels and flies like other 737s. MCAS is designed to activate in manual flight with flaps up at elevated angle of attack. The original MCAS design operated without redundancy and allowed single faulty angle of attack sensor to cause erroneous MCAS activation. This fault, combined with unrestricted MCAS commands to move the stabilizer to its limits, was named as the contributing factor in the two accidents leading to the global grounding of the 737 MAX. To address this, the flight control computers will now use data from both angle of attack sensors. The flight control computers will compare the inputs to monitor data discrepancy. If the difference between the angle of attack sensors is above a calculated threshold, the flight control computers will disable the MCAS function. Together with that, revised flight control laws permit only one activation of MCAS per sensed high angle of attack event. Subsequent activation of MCAS would be possible only after the airplane returns to a low angle of attack state, below the threshold that would cause MCAS activation. The updated flight control computer software would also limit the magnitude of any MCAS command to move the horizontal stabilizer. MCAS will not move the stabilizer beyond a position where the pitch down momentum couldn't be overcome by the elevator. System redundancy, single activation and stabilizer movement limitation will ensure that the MCAS will never put the aircraft out of control again. In the second area, the Federal Aviation Administration proposes changes in the current MAX non-normal checklists. This is to facilitate the pilot's ability to recognize and respond to undesired horizontal stabilizer movement and the effects of a potential angle of attack sensor failure. Airspeed unreliable and runaway stabilizer are two non-normal conditions related to a faulty angle of attack sensor and the uncommanded MCAS activation. The FAA proposes the following changes in the airspeed unreliable checklist. It proposes to add a step to allow the flight crew to determine a reliable airspeed indication without the use of reference tables. It suggests to improve the procedure for go-rounds to allow for increased use of automation. It proposes to add a step to ensure that the erroneous altitude information is not transmitted via the transponder to air traffic control. And finally, it suggests to add a note that erroneous angle of attack data may be the cause for unreliable airspeed conditions. The runaway stabilizer checklist is used when there is an undesired movement of the airplane's horizontal stabilizer. The FAA proposes revisions to the criteria for use of this checklist to include conditions where uncommanded horizontal stabilizer movement occurs continuously or in a manner not appropriate for current flight conditions. 
The revised checklist will also include an explicit recall item that instructs the flight crew to use their thumb actuated trim switch to reduce forces on the control column. The checklist would also include a recall item to use the control column and thrust levers to control the airplane's pitch attitude and airspeed. Finally, the checklist would be revised to add a reference item to manually trim the horizontal stabilizer for pitch control and a note that two pilot effort may be used and needed to correct an out of trim condition. Among other checklists which will be revised or added are the following. Stabilizer trim inoperative, speed trim fail, stabilizer out of trim, AOA disagree, ALT disagree and IS disagree. All of the checklists that the FAA proposes to revise or add were already incorporated in the Quick Reference Handbook for the 737 MAX. In the third area, the FAA proposes to mandate angle of attack disagree alert to the entire 737 MAX fleet. Some 737 MAX airplanes were delivered without this alert feature by error. While according to the FAA, the lack of angle of attack disagree alert is not an unsafe condition by itself, it proposes to mandate this software update to restore compliance with regulations and also because the revised non-normal checklists now rely on this alert to guide flight crew action. Angle of attack disagree alert will illuminate on the primary flight display when there is a difference between the two angle of attack sensors greater than 10 degrees for more than 10 seconds. In the fourth and last area, the FAA proposes to change horizontal stabilizer trim wire routing installations to meet the new certification design standards. In 2007, certification design standards changed to allow more physical separation so that the wiring failure cannot create a hazard. Unlike the previous 737 models, the 737 MAX was certified under the new design standards. Before the MAX gets its certification back, the wire routing for the horizontal stabilizer will need to be changed to restore compliance with the regulations. I hope that you learned something new today. If you'd like to know more about the aircraft systems and specifically more about the 737, download our 737 Handbook app where you can benefit from interactive simulations, technical articles and videos.